like to call to order this regular town council meeting in council chambers. Madam Clerk, may I please have a roll call? May. Councilor Danforth. Here. Councilor Dubay. Here. Councilor Higgins. Here. Councilor Mackin. Here. Chair Medor. Here. Council McLaughlin. Here. And Councilor Pelletier. Here. Would you please all stand and remove your hats and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Mr. Manager, any adjustments to the agenda? He had an update to the manager's report and the addition of resolve number four, 2024. Okay, thank you. Oh, approval of the minutes for the May 8th, 2024 special meeting and executive session. Second. Motion made by Councilor DeMay, second by Councilor Danforth. Any council discussion? Down to the public, back to the council. All those in favor? Oh, we got to do it by straw. Okay. Councilor Pelletier. Aye. Councilor Mackin. Councilor Higgins. Aye. Councilor DeMay. Chair Madure, aye. Councilor Danforth. Aye. Councilor McGowan. Aye. Thank you. All right. Now we'll move to special presentations and resolve number two uh, dash 2024. This is a proclamation for recognition of EMS week which is May 19th through May 25th, 2024. Councillor Higgins, would you please? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Resolved number two, 2024, proclamation in recognition of EMS week, May 19, 2024 through May 25th, 2024. Whereas emergency medical services are vital public service, are a vital public service, and whereas the members of our emergency medical services team are ready to provide life-saving care to those in need 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and whereas access to quality emergency care dramatically improves the survival and recovery rate of those who experience sudden illness, illnesses or injury, and whereas emergency medical services have grown to fill a gap by providing important out-of-hospital care, including preventative medicine, follow-up care, and education, and whereas the emergency medical services system consists of first responders, emergency medical technicians, paramedics, emergency medical dispatchers, firefighters, administrators, pre-hospital nurses, emergency nurses, emergency physicians, and other out of hospital medical care providers. And whereas the members of our emergency medical services team, whether full or part-time, engage in thousands of hours of specialized training and continuing education to enhance their life-saving skills. And whereas it is appropriate to recognize the value and the accomplishments of our emergency medical services providers by designating Emergency Medical Services Week now. Therefore, the Town of Millinocca Council and Council assembled on May 23rd, 2024, do hereby proclaim and recognize the week of May 19th through May 25th, 2024 as Emergency Medical Services Week. Second. Motion made by Council Higgins, second by Council DeMay. Any council discussion on the proclamation? Councillor Danforth. Yes, thank you. The only thing that I would say is that every week is EMS week. I could not imagine living in a community that we did not have these services, and I am very grateful for the services and the people that provide them. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else? I, for one, think that this, as somebody who for the longest time had a father who was elderly, I saw firsthand many occasions where EMS through our local fire department did an incredible job with him. And I know he is just one example of thousands that have happened. You have an excellent staff chief. You have the support 
the appreciation and the admiration of this community as a whole for your work, for the work from previous years, and work will be done in the future. We are very fortunate to have you, and I think this is a great time to honor you and your staff. I also think the barbecue yesterday was very good, and I overate. And thank you for having it. Anyone from the public? Seeing none. All right, we'll go for the vote then. All those in favor, Councilor Pelletier. Aye. Councilor Mackin. Aye. Councilor Higgins. Aye. Councilor DeMay. Aye. Councilor Danforth. Aye. Councilor McGowan. Aye. And I will follow it up with an aye. It's unanimous. Could I please have you come up? Just to let you know, and I am my apologies for not bringing it, but yesterday we got a, a certificate of appreciation from the fire department for the council for our continued support of the fire and EMS in the town, and uh, which I thought was very nice and was presented at the barbecue. I will bring it to the next meeting, I promise. Uh, okay, let's move on to Councilor DeMay. If I could please have you read resolve number three. this yeah yours works too well <laughs> thank you mr chairman council resolution resolve number three 2024 state of maine community development block grant program whereas the town of millinocket wishes to apply the department of economic and community development for a community development block grant to carry out the community development program and whereas the planning process required by main law in the CDBG program have been complied with, including participation in the planning process by low and moderate income families and individuals and the community has conducted at least one duly advertised public hearing and whereas the town of Millinocket is cognizant of the requirement that should be intended national objective of the CDBG program not be met all CDBG funds must be repaid to the state of Maine CDBG program now therefore be it resolved by the council the town of Millinocket that the town manager number one is authorized and directed to submit an application for the community enterprise grant program in the amount of $100,000 to the state of Maine's CDBG program and the to the Department of Economic and Community Development on behalf of the town of Millinocket substantially in the form presented to this council. Number two, it is authorized to make assurances on behalf of the town of Millinocket required as part of such applications. And number three, it is authorized and directed upon acceptance to said funds to carry out the duties and responsibilities for implementing and said programs consistent with the charter of the town of Millinocket and the laws and regulations governing planning and implementation of community development programs in the state of Maine. Date enacted, authorized signatures. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. We have Second. a motion made by Councilor DeMay, second by Councilor Higgins. Any council discussion on the result? Seeing none. Yes, Mr. Manager, if you would, please. So this resolve is more of a formality in the process. 
Um, we've been accepted for the program. This allows us um, access to step two, which is, or I guess it's step three at this point, um, which is, you know, we, the next steps will be another public hearing, um, the release of the um, request for applications, which we completed yesterday and had reviewed by the CDBG. Um, so we are planning on June 13th to discuss and present an order um, regarding matching funds. This resolve doesn't necessarily commit us to accepting um, the check or matching funds yet, um, but the overall program is um, it'll allow us to disperse $100,000 um, in grants up to $20,000, uh, depending on the applications um, throughout commercial properties um, in the community uh, to help with necessary facade updates, you know, if they need newer, more efficient windows or heat pumps or um, coats of paint, you know, signing, that sort of thing. Um, and so we'll discuss the matching funds, the first meeting of June. I see Amber's got her camera on. Uh, am I missing anything, Amber? No, I just like to highlight. So June thirteenth, um, we would host the public hearing to give everyone in the community an opportunity to talk about the funds, um, and then we would present an order to accept, um, not only the funds but provide a match. Um, and the facade would cover anything on the outside of the building. So, um, the manager had mentioned heat pumps, but unfortunately, heat pumps wouldn't be included. Thanks for that. We good. Yeah, we're we're good. So okay. this is uh, just a step in the process to get that program up and running for the commercial property owners in town. Very good. Any council discussion or questions? How about with the public? Back to the council. All those in favor of resolve number three for Councilor Pelletier. Aye. Councilor Mackin. Councilor Higgins. Aye. Councilor DeMay. Aye. Councilor Danforth. Aye. Councilor McGowan. Aye. Chair Medor, aye. It's unanimous. And now Vanna will come with your signatures. Get your signatures. All right. <laughs> All right. Next on our agenda, we have a presentation by Brad Fitzgerald of the East Milwaukee Police Department. This is a quarterly update. Brad, it's all yours. Peter told me. Well, I wanted to hand these out to you guys and talk about it. You have a little better idea of what I'm talking about. Thank you. You may or may not have seen Peter and I weren't sure, so. Thank you. Yeah. The year to date, that was last year. Yep. Can we go on? Um, so thank you for having us, first off. Um, I know we haven't been able to come in and meet a lot. We've, Peter and I have had some discussions since the end of last year, beginning of this year, and there's some things that we wanted to work on um, and we wanted to improve upon moving forward as we you know, look at uh, moving forward with the contract. So I know we haven't been able to really talk to the whole council, really, of what Small Market PD truly is. And to give, you know, a snapshot of the agency, um, our staffing, call volumes, some things like that. Some of you may have heard this before in previous meetings, but I want to give it to the whole council so everybody can hear it. So we are an 11-person full-time staffed department. And that's including the positions in Millinocket, the positions in East Millinocket, and the position in Medway, um, along with 
We have roughly eight part-time staff administratively comprised of the chief of police, two sergeants, and a corporal. Our guys work 12 hour shifts, a day shift, a night shift, and then uh, two different evening shifts. Most importantly, 100% our minimum staffing is a minimum of two officers. Um, we will not drop below two officers. We will always have two officers on for many reasons. As you guys can see, the call volume is high and officer safety in 2024 is paramount. And as you'll see when we start going over some of the stats, what we're dealing with now compared to what dealt with five and 10 years ago was completely different. There's a lot of calls now, a lot of people we deal with that is not safe and best practice to be dealing with it with one person. Um, so we always have two officers on. Um, so that is crucially important that everybody knows that 24 seven around the clock, you know, if someone calls out sick, someone's coming in or the chief's coming in on a Saturday. We do what we need to do. Um, Chief works patrol for the rest of us because he'll tell you his philosophy is important to work with the guys and be connected to the community and know what's going on. So everybody in the department, all, all works. Um, and then in the evenings, we could be anywhere, three to four officers. And then when we have special events, details, things like that, we obviously up staff a lot. So, you know, for the Eclipse alone, just... East Mill PD, I think we had 10 officers. The marathon I shared with the chairman, um, our operations plan, and how many officers we had. And then as, you know, summer comes and we have these events, you know, we'll up staff for more people and um, detail funding, you know, we'll up staff with more officers as well. So, you know, the, yes, there's one, a minimum of one officer always assigned in Millinocket. The, Real important piece of that is they're assigned to this town as the primary for taking complaints. But every officer on staff has the ability to work and cover in all three towns. And to be quite honest, um, you'll as you'll see by the call volume, Millinocket by far is our workload. <clears throat> so it's um, last year it was well over 50% of our call volume. And then when I discussed a little bit this year, it's, it's higher. So. There might be one officer that's assigned to patrol Millinocket to take primary complaints, but a vast majority of the time, the other officers working are either coming up here to assist on calls or um, taking care of the overflow of calls. So it's not that one guy's getting hung out to dry and no one's coming to help. You know, we're one department covering three towns, so everybody is uh, pitching in to do everything. So, and then obviously, as situations dictate, we will respond with however many are needed. If people need to come in, they will come in. Um, we will do what needs to be done. Um, administratively, we have no administrative staff. All administrative duties are um, the responsibility of either the chief, the sergeant, or myself. We all have designated duties. Um, the biggest reason you get here from me today is mine is mostly all of the, um, when it comes to statistics, scheduling, grants, all of that stuff is things that I uh, take care of, equipment, um, crime reporting. So um, I felt it best that I speak with you guys about this. We also have a lot of uh, specialized officers and certifications on our staff. So as we've highly publicized, we were very fortunate to receive a grant to purchase a canine, um, which is a, you know, not a purchase we want to put on the community, but a very huge asset to this region. Um, that grant totaled over $36,000, which covered everything from the cost of the dog and training, cruiser upfitting, um, because the cruisers need to be specialized for heat alarms and cold alarms and everything else for the dog. Um, so once completed, Sergeant Clayton is the handler. She will be done on June 7th, and the dog will be certified in tracking suspect apprehension, article searches, building and area searches, and most importantly, narcotics. Um, so we were very, very uh, fortunate to be able to receive that grant, to be able to add that um, great asset to the Catan region. We also have a hostage negotiator on staff, child, sa child safety seat technician, um, a drug recognition expert, which we're able to um, get that training based off a grant as well. 
because the to become a DRE, you have to be sent to Florida, where they go to the prisons down there and um, do a lot of their practical testing on inmates because I know it's hard to believe, but they get a lot of drugs in jail. So that's where the best testing is. Um, we have officers that are certified in A-Ride, which is mostly used for um, roadside impairment, people under the influence of drugs. We have firearms instructor, active shooter instructors, mark instructors, um, civil rights officer, Foxalizer site, soon we're going to have a taser instructor. So we have a lot of officers that are able to get specialized training, which is also a benefit to the whole department, the whole region. Um, so next we can um, kind of talk about, I'll talk on some of the other grants that we kind of have working. So I discussed the, the DRE program. So we got a grant for the training, plus that grant also covered if she were to be um, called out off shift, they would pay for her overtime to do the examination. Uh, the K-9 program, obviously, that was all grant funded. Tomorrow, we will see the completion of a, this was a joint effort um, with East Millinock at FIRE, but it also has a, will have a benefit to the entire Katahdin region where we got a grant $45,000 to add repeaters for our local frequencies. So these are not dispatch frequencies, but local frequencies used for like on-scene operations. So this will um, expand the radio coverage we have in the Katahdin region. And we're also gonna upgrade some outdated radios. We also were selected as a part of congressionally directed spending through Jared Golden's office, which will cover the cost of body camera implementation and a TrueNARC drug testing device. We're waiting um, we're waiting on that funding, but we know that it has been um, accepted. With body cameras will come a lot of administrative work, but um, it'll be a big benefit, but there is a, uh, there's a very large cost to them. And then obviously, um, money through inland fisheries for ATV enforcement. So uh, back to staffing, I, I think I mentioned we have two current vacant positions of the 11 full-time positions and be quite honest, hiring and public safety as a whole right now, not just law enforcement, is extremely difficult. Um, we're, you're competing with every agency that's, you know, doing a dollar higher than the next agency to steal somebody to fill their vacancies, and they're just opening vacancies up at another agency. Um, that's happening not just across the state, but all across the country. And it's all of public safety, I'm sure. Chief Cody could tell you the same when it comes to fire and EMS. It is uh, very difficult to find qualified applicants um, for these positions. Plus once you hire them and they go through the entire process with polygraphs and backgrounds and psych tests and everything else, then you gotta get them through the academy. It's um, very time consuming and very difficult to find someone that wants to do this. I think a lot of it re uh, relates back to, you know, the perception that public service has as a whole now. And based on not many people want to work nice weekends and holidays anymore. So uh, it is it is difficult, but we um, have been fortunate in the last couple of weeks to hire um, a couple of people to help fill some of the vacancies we had because we were down to four vacancies. Um, but even with that, we were continuing to maintain two man staffing, paying the overtime to cover the shifts um, to make sure that there was adequate coverage in the region. And then kind of lastly, on one of the points, like I had mentioned, um, town manager and I kind of found that there was a lack of solid communication between our agency department. And it was something that was discussed at the beginning of this contract. And then as staff changes and council changes and manager changes, it kind of got lost in translation. So that was one thing that we um, made it a priority to bring back. And, um, Peter and I have been able to talk regularly. I've made it very clear to call all hours of night. So I'm pretty good so far. He hasn't woken me up all the night yet, but um, if there's an issue, he calls. Um, we've been able to follow a lot of things, a lot of complaints um, that he's heard that, you know, got to one side of the story and, you know, can hear the whole story. So it has worked very well to um, create that relationship and bridge that gap that we previously had and um, that's something that we'll improve upon going forward. That's, I think, mostly everything I have on my list. 
So just kind of the last thing I wanted to discuss is um, kind of what the call volume, kind of what things are looking like. So what you have in front of you is the completed statistics from 2023. So typically I send these out every month. Um, we have not done any yet for 2024 for various reasons. So we're required to report to uh, the federal government crime statistics and the system we use for that is currently broken, um, which is making it difficult. Plus when I do statistics, I try and wait to get some information for the DA's office on some cases. So we're giving an accurate representation of um, arrest and offenses and such. So that's starting to improve. So you'll start to see um, the monthly. And when I do give a monthly, I do um, send them to Peter. So you guys can have them, but just a breakdown. So you know what you're looking at when you see this. So obviously the top is just our total calls that we responded to in 2023, which again was a record year. We were just shy of 11,000 calls. And it's broken down amongst the three communities. Um, as you can see, Millinock, it was um, more than half of our call volume. And then the other coverage area is basically when we go outside of our three communities to assist, whether it be the sheriff's office or the state police. And then we talk about the uh, total number of traffic stops, the arrested or summonses, adults and juveniles, the average calls for the day. The next box with observed offenses, obviously you see that's a higher number than the total calls for service. So basically what that um, shows is when an officer deals with an incident, if there are multiple um, offenses that they deal with, that's the more accurate representation of that call. So an officer might get called to a domestic and when they get there, they could deal with, you know, someone with a warrant, violation of bail, drug offenses, et cetera. So, and, you know, all those offenses are captured in that one incident. So when you look at these subsequent pages, the column on the left is the offenses that are reported. Those numbers are the ones that reflect the total calls for service. And in the observed offenses are in that column are the numbers that reflect um, that bottom number. So I'm not going to go through all of these. I just want to highlight a couple, you know, big things that we've seen. So um, last year, we definitely saw an increase on assaults and um, assault on officers and aggravated assaults. So and I think a lot of these things are driven by, um, if you look down uh, towards the end of the page, the amount of drug crimes that we responded to in 2023, which is, again, significantly high. We did have a um, very large reduction in our burglaries, which is, you know, on the positive note. And totally, we only had six last year, um, so that's uh, so that's big. But some of the other things, you know, bail and probation searches are are high because that goes to the proactivity of the officers. We still are seeing a very high number, and more so once we got a DRE on staff of paired drivers, and surprisingly. I think this year, if I were to run the numbers, our impaired drivers that we're encountering are more likely impaired by drugs than they are alcohol. Um, so thankfully having that member on staff now, we're more easily able to investigate and prosecute those, those crimes. But the law in the state is it doesn't matter what you're impaired by if you're impaired and you're operating um, against the law. And then mental health, we again are continuing to see increases of our calls for service for that. Um, like I said, I won't, I won't go through all of them, but it kind of gives you guys a breakdown of what you're looking at. If you, um, have any questions on any of they, what they are, what they mean, I'm more than willing, um, to explain them to you and kind of how we, um, process all this. And I think for the most part, that's everything, uh, that we had. I know that Peter and I did talk about, this is something that we would like to do more on a quarterly basis mm -hmm. to at least kind of give you guys a snapshot of, of what's going on, but don't hesitate. Like I've told Peter, anytime questions, comments, concerns, he can reach right out to me and I'll answer them day or night. So, Well, that's a good start. So I'm going to the council. Any questions, comments, or concerns that you'd like to either to uh, Brad or the chief? Councilor DeMay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want to first thank, uh, thank you, Corporal, and thank you, Chief, for coming in today. Uh, I really do appreciate the improved uh, communications. Um, 
I got your phone number, so you've always answered anything that I've had. And I appreciate your cooperation with the manager. Um, I appreciate what you guys do every day, uh, stepping up in the uh, technical community. It's not an easy job that you guys have and very stressful, um, especially with all the state legislative laws, we yeah. pass laws that you guys have to deal with that do not make your job easy. Um, compound a lot of problems. So um, I just wanted to lead off with on a positive note of thanking you for all that you guys do and thank you for um, making this contract better than it, than it has been in the past and I think communication is going to be key and um, I'm going to leave it with that. Thanks. Thank you. Anyone else? Councilor Higgins? I also want to say thank you. And it's kind of sad that over 50% of those is for this town. And actually, it's, it's sad. It shouldn't be that way. But we appreciate that you guys are here for us and for the job that you do. I want to say thank you. Thank you. Councilor Danforth. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I too, I guess it's okay to say thank you three, four, five times. I appreciate that. I'm sure <laughs> Without saying I reiterate, you. right? Um, but I know um, when I was first elected, this was one of the first big decisions I had to make for our community. And I still am happy, <laughs> happy that I made that decision. It was really tough. Um, and and we can see um, it was much needed. You know, it was a big change for us. Um, and so I too appreciate how things have evolved and that looking forward that they will continue to evolve because I know it's not all, um, it's not all figured out, um, especially the staffing issues. One of the biggest things that I always hear is like, oh, we don't have another, they're not in Millinocket all the time. We need somebody here, even though, you know, they say they are and I can understand based on your description of what's happening around staffing. And I knew that anyway, but you know, community at large always does not that right. um, you're trying to do the best that you can under the circumstances and you have three com uh, communities to cover. So um, going forward, I appreciate too, knowing the communication is gonna be a bit better. And I, Peter has shared that he's had a chance to speak with you quite often and working through some of those things as well. We'll look forward to quarterly updates. But um, yeah, thank you for what you're doing for our community um, and let's keep working together. Thank you. You, Council McGowan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, well, I too want to say thank you. Um, and I do appreciate this communication. This is the first time that I've, um, I've been on the council for a year. So it's nice to have you here and to hear um, an update in communication in person. So I think if we you continue to come quarterly and, and speak with us, that's going to just change things dramatically. Um, I'm sure you hear negative things, but I just want to assure you that I hear a lot of positive things about the East Millinocket Police Department as well. Um, and my experience, I am a school employee. Your relationship with the schools here in Millinocket is wonderful. They're, they're, your officers are in the schools. They're developing relationships with the staff and the students. Um, they respond when we need them. So I am very happy as well. So thank you. Thank you. Councilor DeMay. Thank you, Mr. There was something I wanted to say, but um, I was waiting for the right time. <laughs> and this is kind of like an, an elephant in the room kind of statement that I want to say. And, and I hope everybody out there is listening. All of us councilors deal with townspeople in Millinocket. And of course, we know that there's a good chunk that would like their police department back, and there's a good chunk that are very happy with the services that are being provided. I have something to say to both both crowds. Um, the floor yours. <laughs> <laughs> Until such a day that Millinocket does have a police department back, I want to make sure that you guys know that you're welcome. Because often I hear too much about this and that and the, and the pros and the cons and why we regionalization of this and regionalization of that. What's really the cost savings over here, the cost savings over here. At the end of the day, your families and your communities being protected, served. So 
beyond a thank you, I want to let you guys know, to me, you're very welcome. And at least half of the people out there in Millinocket feel the same way. <clears throat> uh, and to those that, that want their own department back, it's very, very difficult. Because who says that if we had one, we could staff it? Who says that we would save money? Who says anything? I mean, this is the direction that we're going. So at the end of the day, can you sleep at night knowing <laughs> that you're being protected, your kids are being protected? That, that's pretty pretty much the gist of what I wanted to say. I, I want to make sure you guys know that you're welcome here and, uh, and not just doing it for a paycheck. Because I know from speaking right. to you, Brad, that it's more than that. Right. And from knowing most of the officers, it's more than that. And the five-year contract is designed to make it more attractive for, I mean, there's out clauses, of course, if you guys want to get out or if we want to get out, there's out clauses in all those contracts. Come a day that, that we should find ourselves in that situation. But until then, the security of your officers that want to work in Millinocket or even live in Millinocket, they want that longevity. They want to know that they're going to have a job for that mm -hmm. period of time and not just for six months, just here for six months, and then I got to go fuck with some rounds. So there's many benefits to having a long-term contract, but you're not tied to it if the situation changes. So I just think as far as, I, and I hope I can speak for most of the council on this, that that we we really do thank you and welcome. That's, that's what I'd like to say. I think one thing, Chairman, sure. if I may. Yep. Um, and I, I think the chief would probably echo this is, you know, I've worked, you know, when I first started in law enforcement, I started in Millinocket. Um, and I've worked in East Millinocket since 2012. Been through, you know, multiple different chiefs up here, multiple changes in the community. You know, I've seen how things have gone. And, and not just in law enforcement now, you know, in public safety as a whole, the only way, you know, because I've been around it since, you know, 20 plus years, the only way we're going to succeed is more communities and agencies working together for the same common goal. Mm -hmm. So prior to when it was, you know, just East Millinocket PD, I would have never, ever fathomed we'd have some of the things like canine, DREs, um, the equipment we have, the training that we can go. But because of that combined effort of the three communities pulling together, We've been able to, you know, expand our services, um, but also, you know, being budget conscious in, in the three communities. So I think that's a big thing. You know, we've hired um, some young officers that have come here that have moved here um, from out of town. We've got people to move back home to the Katahdin region because of mm -hmm. um, the consolidated services. And that's really, I mean, what we're looking for. Um, but some of these officers are being able to get specialized trainings, which is a big thing in tension um, that we you know, talked about. And I think because of the support of three communities instead of one, it allows us better opportunities to that. And I know when it has come to grants, that's allowed us more success with some of these grants as well, because that money is not just supporting one town, supporting three towns. So I, I think that's you know an important thing to note as well, that three towns just working together on some of these things. I mean, it's so different in the fire service now. Millinocket is not going to go to a house fire by themselves anymore. You know, none of these communities up here are going to handle a true emergency by themselves anymore. We all, you know, are relying on each other to get the job done, and each town is just kind of, you know, putting their pieces in, into the puzzle to make it all work. So, you know, it, it goes both ways. You know, we appreciate the support from, you know, the town of Millinocket, East Millinocket, and Medway, so we can, you know, provide the service to everyone. Thank you. Either Councillor Pelletier or Councillor Mackin, do you have anything you'd like to share? Councillor Pelletier. Certainly want to echo everything that's been said, and I think it's been the right direction for the community. And uh, look forward to a long relationship with the East Milwaukee Police Department. Thank you. Thank you. I'll go down to the public. Anybody from the public want to? Have any questions, comments? Certainly, come right up. Name and address, please. You got it. <laughs> Good job. Uh, 72 Rustic Avenue, Milwaukee. Uh, I'd like to uh, just reiterate some of Jesse's comments. And 
I see the officers uh, all the time in a good way. And uh, I always believed we should have our own department, but to go along with Jesse, uh, East Milwaukee Police Department, maybe we ought to change the name of that, but uh, <laughs> what I've seen and what you don't see, I think they've uh, done a superb job, an excellent job. Uh, I don't think you, the three towns could have a better regional department uh, if we tried. But uh, like I said, I, I see them all the time. There's a couple of little things that I'll email them sometime on, but uh, everything I've, I've seen has been pretty positive. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, name and address, please. He did it the first try. <laughs> Sandy Sullivan, 104 Sunset Drive. Um, I am one of them that Jesse's talking about. Um, I'm not so much concerned about where the police department is located. What I'm concerned about is the number of officers that is patrolling each shift. I fear for not only the citizens, but the officers. We have some not very nice people out there sometimes. And if the officer that is patrolling in Milnarket has to wait for an officer to come from East Milnarket to help, that may not and well, that's my concern, not where it's located. Thank you. Thank you. Brad, do you want to address that? Um, that concern? Yeah, I mean, obviously, we would love to be able to staff two officers in, in every town. But to be quite frank, looking all across, I mean, I can think of one agency alone that, um, or one community alone that's probably almost double the size of our three communities and they're running one officer a lot of times and they're relying on the towns next to them to send back up. So it's happening nationwide. We would, you know, love to, you know, be able to upstaff more, but we also have to think uh, diligent budget as well. But that also goes back to why we are very firm on our minimum of two officers because you know, even if the officer's in East Millinocket and there's an officer that needs assistance up here, talking five to seven minutes. Now, you have to wait in our next closest agency to us, and that's the other thing that um, is unique to the Katahdin region, nobody else around us. You know, our next 24-7 police department is Lincoln. And we've been to Lincoln to assist them in the middle of the night because they're by themselves um, and there's nobody else out, you know. State police a lot of times are in at midnight. The sheriff's office is in at midnight. So if depending on you know which deputy it is, you if you have to call them at two in the morning, you could wait an hour. Um, so is it ideal that sometimes there's one guy up here? Absolutely not. Um, but we always have another guy five to seven minutes away. So that's you know. Council to make. Just for clarification, you're talking two officers plus a supervisor, right, on duty? Depending on the time of day, yes. Right. So, like in the so evenings, there sure could that everybody knew that. Then. Yes. So in the evenings, you, you could have two three. officers and a right. Sometimes four. Anyone else from the public? Seeing none, Councilor Danforth. Thank you. So I do have a follow-up question. Once you're fully staffed, is there ever a time where you're looking to staff two people in Millinocket? Yes, when we are fully staffed in the evenings, there will be two people in Millinocket and two people between East Millinocket and Medway. Um, and even some other times without being fully staffed with some of our part-timers, that's happening. So last weekend on Saturday night, there was four of us. So there was two people up here. And to be honest with you, the way things were going, there was three of us up here and one down there. Um, so it's still happening now, but when we're fully staffed, 
that's part of the schedule that we currently have built is in the evenings when it's busier that it'll be three and four man coverage. What's that? Anyone else from the council? Oh, I guess it's my turn. Uh, we have, between Councillor DeMay, myself, and the manager, we have gone ahead and uh, met with East Milwaukee PD to, to discuss and to hammer out this contract for a five-year period. Uh, I think it was a very amicable decision by all parties that this is a, the best and tried to address as many of the needs for the communities as we did. So I was very pleased with the cooperation. I was very pleased with the uh, ability to go ahead and have an open dialogue and communication on this. And uh, I hope that uh, the council sees their way clear to uh, vote in favor of this police contract. It, it does everything basically primarily that we've asked for and what you've asked for as far as the duration of the contract to give a little bit of stability for the officers to have and the increase so that we could attract people to fill those two positions that are available now. Um, I've been told by many uh, a chief over the course of my time on the council that if you really want to see what police department does, go for a ride around in the evening. And you will see just what these officers face alone, sometimes two officers, but a lot of times alone, and what they see and what they have. And it is very eye-opening. It is, uh, it makes you appreciate the fact that you sleep soundly in your beds while these people are out there making sure you're safe. And I appreciate it. I thank you for it. And if there is no further public comment or council comment on this, we will move to a vote. Oh, yeah. oh no, we're not voting yet. Oh no, I'm sorry. Yeah. I want to vote for this. No, I want to vote now. <laughs> Do, is Brad, you or the chief have anything else to add? Mr. Thank Chairman, you. I'd like to Certainly. Motion to move the order with the contract up in the agenda. Okay, we are looking at the Second. order 139-2024. We'll move that up. If and it's been motion and second, all in favor, let's go with vote. Councilor Pelletier. Aye. Councilor Mackin. Councilor Higgins. Aye. Councilor DeMay. Aye. Councilor Danforth. Aye. Councilor McGlawan. Aye. Chair Medour, aye. We will move it up now. So, can I ask Councilor DeMay, would you please read order 139 2024? Yes, Mr. Chairman, order number 139-2024, providing for a renewal of contract for police services, whereas order 318-2020, extended via order number 129-2021, and amended via order number 10-2022, provided approval for contract and police services to be provided by the Town of East Millinocket, term of which is set to expire June 30th, 2024, and whereas representatives from both parties have met within the terms agreement to present and propose renewal of said contract, it is ordered that the Millinocca Town Council approves the attached five-year contract for police services to continue being provided for the Town of East Millinocca beginning July 1st, 2024. Second. Motion made by Councilor DeMay, second by Councilor McGall this time. Uh, any council discussion on the order? Councilor DeMay. I'm just very happy that I'm reading an order that doesn't have CDBG. <laughs> <laughs> Any other council comment? Down the public. Back to the council. Uh, Councillor Pelletier, how do you vote? Aye. Councillor Mackin. Aye. Councillor Higgins. Aye. Councillor DeMay. Aye. Councillor Danforth. Aye. Councillor McGuallan. Aye. Chair Medora is aye. The motion is approved unanimously. Thank, Thank you, you very much, gentlemen. And now it's the signing of the signatures to make everything legal. Chief, thank you very much for coming. Thank you, Brad. I look forward to yes. yes thank you. Okay. All right. Councillor Danforth, can I please have you read resolve number four dash twenty twenty four? It's there somewhere. 
Resolve number 4-2024, whereas the University of Maine system is currently seeking a feasibility study for a Penobscot County-based medical school due to legislation sponsored by Maine Senator Joe Baldacci, passed by the legislature last year and signed by Governor Janet Mills, and whereas the useful need for such a school is seen by many people, and whereas Maine's physician shortage is much greater in rural areas of Maine, and whereas medical students from schools located in those rural areas are more likely to settle and practice in rural areas after completion of their residencies, and whereas a medical school located in a rural main like rural town like Millinock, it can be expected to entice college students from surrounding areas to apply to that medical school. And whereas the need for such a school in the part of Maine in which Millinocket is located is clear. And whereas the town of Millinocket has been making substantial efforts to help Millinocket in the area immediate surround immediate around Millinocket further develop and prosper. So be it here resolved that the Millinocket Town Council to support the development of such a school in or near Millinocket and further here directs that the Millinocket Town staff to inform Governor Mills and Senator Baldacci and University of Maine System and others of this resolve and assist it in locating a place for such a school. Do I hear a second? Second. Second. Motion made by Councilor Danforth, second by Councilor McGlollin. Um, Councilor Danforth, you you were first, I think, approached to you and I. Uh, and you brought this to everyone's attention. So do you have anything further you want to sure, speak I, on this? I can just mention that um, actually Gordon Street, a town councilor from Lincoln, reached out to me. And I guess later found out he reached out to some other councilors asking if we would sponsor this resolve. They have passed this in Lincoln. And basically, it's a resolve for a feasibility study. So it's just... Um, thinking it would be great if there was a medical school located where there's two, you know, hospitals, the PVH, Millinock at this area. Um, so it's just a study. It's probably, you know, sort of pie in the sky to think that um, a medical school would be here, but you got to think about the future. And if you don't think about it or potentially believe it, it won't come to fruition. So this is just, you know, asking um, the powers that be when you do a feasibility study, think about this region um, for that purpose. Thank you, Councilor Danforth. Uh, any council comment on the result? I, for one, think it's, you know, it's an idea and, you know, some great things sometimes come with very simple ideas. And this idea is out there. Certainly, uh, you know, if it has to be somewhere, why not here? That's my approach. If they can put a medical school here to benefit our communities and rural areas, we are, you know, we are the gateway to a vast area of Upper Penobscot, Aroostook County, where medical attention and hospitals and services are really stretched. And one of the big things we have a problem with is trying to attract qualified and train or whatever to fill positions in our hospitals and our medical staff. Uh, it may it, it may work out for us, it may not, but I think a first step in going ahead and giving support to this to be further moved forward, uh, I can't see what the what the uh, hesitation would be, and I think it would be a great idea for us to to support this. Anyone from the public want to ask want to address anything on this? Seeing none, back to the council. Councilor Pelletier, do you have your hand up? No. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, all right, then. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, by voice, Councilor Pelletier, how do you vote on this resolve? Aye. Councilor Mackin? Aye. Councilor Higgins? Aye. Councilor DeMay? Aye. Councilor Danforth? Aye. Councilor McGowan? Aye. Chair Medor is aye. It's unanimous. Thank you all. Councilor Pelletier, may I please have you read order oh, ordinance number 1-2024, second reading? Certainly. Ordinance number 1-2024, providing for setting of town council stipends. Be it ordained by the town council of town of Millinocket in town council assemble that, pursuant to Article 2, Section 205 of the Millinocket Town Charter, Chapter 27 of the Millinocket Code, Salaries and Compensations, Article 1, Town Council, is amended as follows. Section 27-4 is amended to read as follows. Regular council members will be paid 
the amount of two thousand per year, the council chairperson will be paid the amount of three thousand per year. Section twenty seven dash six is amended to read as follows. These increases will commence with the council seated following the November twenty twenty four general election. Be it further ordained that the town council that the town clerk make copies of this amendment and distribute it to all parties known to have a copy of the Milnocka Town Milnocka Code. Be it further ordained that this ordinance take effect 30 days after enactment. Second. Motion made by Councilor Pelletier, second by Councilor Higgins. Uh, council discussion on the ordinance. We should, yes, let's go down to the public because this is a public hearing. So let's go to the public first. Count, certainly, please. I know you know the drill, but name and address. Bruce Levitt, <laughs> 72 Rooster Avenue, Melanocca, Maine. Uh, you kind of know my position on it, and I still affirm that position. I realize that the council does enormous work. I've always realized that. So, uh, I guess it worked for the day, and uh, I appreciate it but I uh, still believe that it should remain the way it is. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the public? Yes, please. Sandra Sullivan, 104 Sunset Drive. Um, I believe that um, it should be raised there is a tremendous amount of work that goes into being a counselor, not just the two Thursday um, uh, meetings that very few of us actually attend. Um, you have executive meetings, do you have, I would guess three or four at least a week. And what we are paying, no, I don't like the word pay, what we are um, giving counselors now doesn't even um, give you gas money to get here. <laughs> um, so I very much think that it is time. It's 2024, not 1924. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the public? Yes. It was so close. Great. I'm still in support of this. I think this is long overdue. Guys, it was 2007 the last time this was done. It's a no brainer. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Ladies first. <laughs> Rachel Potvin, 38 Main Ave. Yep, it's on. It's on. Oh, it was already on. There we go. She's doing good. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I just, I feel that you guys do deserve the stipend. I just don't feel like you guys should be voting on your own. That's all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. Yeah, John Raymond, 236 Highland. Uh, speaking as a prior counselor, I think it's long overdue. Uh, I understand the amount of hours and time that put into this if you do the job right. And uh, $165 a month, pretty cheap. Get somebody up here to put up a lot of the negative comments that you have to deal with and the stuff that people don't see. So uh, great. I'm glad it's going to happen. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Seeing none, that closes our public comment section. Um, I now would like to go ahead and ask Councillor Danforth if you would please read uh, ordinance number one, 2024 amended. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Ordinance number one, 2024, providing for a setting of town council stipends. Be it ordained by the town council of the town of Millinocket in the town council assembled that pursuant to act 
Article 2, Section 205 of the Millinocket Town Charter, Chapter 27 of the Millinocket Code, Salaries and Compensation, Article 1, Town Council is amended as follows. Section 27-4 is amended to read as follows. Regular council members will be paid the amount of 2,000 per year. The council chairperson will be paid the amount of 3,000 per year. Section 27-6 is amended to read as follows. This increases authorized by ordinance number 1-2024 will commence with a council seating, seated following the November 2024 general election. Be it further ordained that the town clerk make copies of this amendment and distribute to all parties known to have a copy of the Millinocket Code. Be it further ordained that this ordinance will take, this ordinance take effect 30 days after enactment. Second. Second. Motion made by Council, Councilor Danforth, second by Councilor Higgins. Uh, Again, we'll go down to the council first to see if there's any council discussion on the amendment. This is stuff that we discussed earlier. And, and it's council domain. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I initially sponsored this, this, uh, this enactment and uh, being on the prevailing side, I'm gonna be changing my vote to a no vote. I feel that the Although I, I really appreciate and uh, the former counselors and the public that have spoken up for it, I think that the overwhelming um, appearance to the public is that it's um, not wanted. So going against my, my own judgment, um, I'm gonna be voting no on this. Uh, the public ever wants to give their council a raise, then they can pick up a petition and do it. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else for the council? Yes. Yes, Councilor Pelletier. <clears throat> I guess I'd like to clarify uh, something that and pose a question. We we are elected, but after we are elected, we are employees of the town, legal employees. We fill out the same W-2 information that all employees do. Granted me, we're considered part-time, no benefits, and by charter, we're the only one that can raise our own pay. Nobody else can do it. So given that we are employees and by charter we are paid a stipend, versus minimum labor wage, how do you justify paying us under $5 an hour, let's say, which I'm sure it's even less than that. Think about that. The amount of time we put in, we're getting a stipend, which is fine because we're not in it for the money. And at $2,000, it's still not we being in it for the money. Let that weigh on your conscience. Thank you, Councilor Pelletier. Any other council comment on this amended order? What do we have? Video. Oh, <coughs> Pelletier, we lost your video. Thank you. Seeing nothing from the council down to the public. Anybody else would like to make any public comment on this, on the amended order? Seeing none, come back to the council. Um, all those in favor of ordinance 1 2024 as amended. Got no voice vote. Right, as amended. Yes, that's what I want to do. As You're, you're, vote, you're voting on the amendment to the uh, order. I've lost sound. It simply changes the there Councilor Pelletier, on the amendment, how do you vote? Aye. Councilor Mackin? Aye. 
Councillor Higgins. Aye. Councillor DeMay. No. Councillor Danforth. Aye. Councillor McGowan. Okay, so we're not actually voting on it. No, table. that's just the amendment. Thank you. Aye. Chairman Doerr, aye. The amendment passes 6-1. Now, we will be voting on Ordinance 1-2024 as amended. Councillor Pelletier, how do you vote? Aye. Councillor Mackin. Aye. Councillor Higgins. Aye. Councillor DeMay. No. Councillor Danforth. No. Councillor McGlawan. No. Chair Medor, no. The vote, the motion fails four to three. It means the, we are going to stay on our current status and our current pay. Thank you, though, all of you for the kind words. Councilor McLaughlin. Oh, let's go to the manager's report first. Geez, I had forgotten this was part of the show. <laughs> Feels like it's been a while. Yep. Uh, budget yep. season does that to us, but thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> um, I do have some positive things to talk about a little bit tonight. And um, for the first time in a couple of months, uh, we're providing um, the full manager's report, including updates from each department. Um, for those just beginning to join us, there are there's a lot more information in here than I go over um, in the public meetings. However, the full report is posted on our website. Um, and I highly encourage everyone to read it in its entirety and see all that's actually going on. So from my office, um, we Chief Cody and I uh, recently had a great meeting with the Penobscot County Unorganized Territory Administration um, and came to a final agreement on what would be proposed to the county commissioners regarding the contract to provide fire and EMS support to the unorganized territories. Um, this new agreement will benefit the town financially and resolves um, the burden that the taxpayers of Millinocket have carried for years related to the cost of providing services outside of our uh, community. So we're very happy to have that piece of that resolved. Um, we are very pleased to have worked with, uh, worked through that agreement with the Unorganized Territory Administration. Um, we thank them for their patience throughout the process and um, the administration was wonderful to work with. Um, it is, oh, they actually, um, this is past tense. This was put out before Tuesday. Um, they had a great conversation on Tuesday, sent us the official um, new contracts to uh, present for consideration. So that's, uh, you'll find that on the agenda later this evening um, for both fire and EMS. Um, the next contract to revisit with Penobscot County Unorganized Territories is for solid waste. Uh, now that our new administration has been through that process, um, once we expect um, and have a you know a strong relationship again with the unorganized territory administration, uh, we expect that to be a pretty smooth process and a pretty quick process. So we'll be uh, meeting with them in the month of June um, and hoping to present. Uh, either by the second meeting in June or the first meeting in um, July for for consideration. Uh, we do know that there are some necessary updates as they, they've not been really reviewed and revised in, in many years. Um, regarding the fairly recent Elks Land purchase, um, so in the very near future, I'll be, I have some uh, meetings with 
woodcutting operations, forestry outfits about um, starting to clear the acreage for the new fire station um, in preparation for that project to um, start taking more shape and hopefully more rapidly. Uh, we recently submitted into this round of congressionally directed spending. Um, Bruce, to order to answer one of your questions from your earlier email, that that is uh, the USDA is the department we submitted that application for. Um, that's for the engineering and construction of the facility. Um, we were well advised through that process with representation from the USDA and um, the offices of our delegation. So um, we do have a we're, we're quite hopeful that, that will be funded. Um, however, it's not a guarantee. And um, along the way, we, we certainly consider, uh, continue to research other opportunities for funding that project as um, hoping not to put that large bill on the backs of the taxpayers, um, which is something we don't intend to do. Um, so we've revived a conversation with uh, an outfit called Deergo Solar um, regarding their interest to construct a solar array, um, array in the back of that parcel near the airport boundary. Um, this outfit has been in communication with the town of Millinocket for two or three years now, um, originally intending to establish their array on a portion of airport property. Um, the ever evolving uh, world of solar regulations and the even more stringent um, FAA regulations have uh, put an end to that discussion. So we've found an opportunity to use roughly 10 acres in the um, in the back of that Elks property um, that we we continue to call it the Elks property, but it, it's actually, um, it's owned by the town of Millinocket. Um, so uh, we met earlier this week and discussed a draft lease. Um, I had some worries, some concerns about some of the uh, stipulations in it. Uh, they were very open to discuss it. They were very accommodating, uh, willing to take it back and change some of the wording to meet our needs. Um, for municipally owned land versus private land ownership. Um, it's a, it gets a little more complicated when it's municipally owned. Um, some of those things wouldn't, wouldn't work so well. Um, but so far it's been a very respectful conversation. The, the, the draft lease was uh, more than fair and, and very beneficial to the town. So I, I look forward to keeping that process going, and I, I hope to have um, a lease option for consideration to the council in the, you know, maybe even in the next month, month and a half or so. Um, <clears throat> discussions are ongoing about the remaining acreage over there. Um, there's some, you know, research is leading to um, – mixed opinions on um, housing versus uh, mixed use commercial, you know, proximity to the airport is um, it weighs on that conversation and, and other needs in the community. Um, my professional opinion is that we need more opportunity for housing. So I'm going to continue to um, try to do that. But between the solar lease and the potential housing lots over there, um, within the next year, uh, that parcel will, or that investment will um, start creating revenue and paying for itself. So um, that that is starting to prove to be a successful journey. Um, court lease is uh, about to be completed. We've been working very closely with the court administration and um, and our attorney on finalizing that agreement. Um, so we hope to have that wrapped up in the next few weeks. Um, and this new agreement will certainly be 
more of a financial benefit to the town than it had been in the past. This agreement hadn't been revisited uh, since the late 80s, early 90s. Um, so things have changed a lot uh, in the in the past few decades. And we're, we're very thankful for the opportunity to rework that and change the rates and, and work together on some building improvements along the way. Uh, it's certainly going to be a busy summer around here. We've got lots of various projects that are set to begin work. Um, the town is doing more paving than, than we've seen in a very, very long time. Um, so we'll look forward to an improvement of a larger portion of roads and sidewalks this summer. Um, the main department of transportation has a pretty major paving project planned for much of central street that covers their route one, uh, route 11 and 157. Uh, the culvert and bridge, uh, connecting Penobscot Avenue to iron bridge road is finally going to be replaced as soon as the water flowage is at a proper level. Um, my understanding you know, over the last couple of years working on that is that that period of time is between uh, late July and early August. So we will be keeping an eye on that and making sure the process goes smooth. The culvert is uh, sitting in Bangor at American Concrete waiting to be picked up and transported into Millinocket to be placed over there and, and redo that access so Tammy can visit her son. <laughs> Um, the RFP for the electrical work on the, uh, Skeeto unit that we're, uh, that we've been working to purchase for that improvement over there that was released, I think yesterday, um, we'll be, we've made the down payment on, uh, the unit on the machine that'll actually pull kids up and down the hill are not down gravity will do that uh, but it'll you know assist folks to get to the top of the hill we're we're considering uh you know a shoot at the top that may be able to enhance that even more but um so the rfp is out um uh, we plan to have a meeting with the bidders and you know public works and and a few other uh, folks, we need to make sure we get the right people at the table for the conversation. Um, so we work all of the uh, kinks in the plan out ahead of time, but that'll happen in the next few weeks. And then the installation and electrical work should be happening towards the end of the summer into the early fall in preparation for the winter. Um, this has been sort of a passion, passion project for, for Amber and I for, uh, within the administration. And we're Definitely really excited to provide that opportunity to the youth and the families in the community to give something really cool, um, um, bring that Skeeto really to life. Um, the process for the conceptual design of our future community center begins this summer. Um, there will be a series of public uh, community meetings that the public is, as always, encouraged and um, dare I say begged to participate in. Um, we would love to have your input um, on the proposed projects. We want to talk about the needs and, and the uh, necessities that, that should be incorporated into that design um, so that we can get a really good idea of what our community as a whole is looking for. And from that step, you know, we then go to an engineering and actual design phase, um, you know, depending on how that conversation goes. So please watch for um, communication around those meetings. If you're not on our email list, if you're not on our text list, um, if you're not subscribed to our Facebook or, you know, look at our bulletin boards or, you know, uh, we've got information flying out left and right. Please subscribe and, and, and follow along so you don't miss this stuff. That ends my office. We're going to go into um, a few updates from various departments here. Again, I am not going to read it in its entirety. Um, Public Works has been doing uh, quite a bit of training by way of 
uh, safety classes and, and other things through the main DOT, uh, most recently work zone traffic control and um, roadway fundamentals. Um, so we're always continuing to offer that crew um, opportunities to improve their knowledge and, and skill set to to do their jobs and, and better, you know, assist our community. Um, for their operations, the street sweeping has been underway for a while now. Um, it has been one headache after another. We're dealing with a very old uh, street sweeper and have experienced multiple breakdowns. Um, parts of it are pretty worn out uh, and not operating at uh, its full potential. We do have intentions of uh, within our next fiscal budget, rather than replacing it in full and being on the hook for those large scale repairs, um, we are considering the lease of one of those machines. Um, they last, you know, several years, five, six years lease. Um, it's substantially less money. It's about $40,000 a year. Um, and all the maintenance and, and that sort of stuff is required, um, is included in the, in the lease. Um, we've found that many other communities are starting to look into that stuff for their bigger machinery. Um, of course, outside of uh, ambulances and fire trucks, we're not going to lease a fire truck, John, don't worry about it. Um, but it is, it's an opportunity and it, and it's a, it provides a huge cost savings with, with, um, top notch equipment. So hopefully we'll have something like that prepared for our next budget season. Um, a little bit of advice from the public works crew. This is something that I actually learned recently and I'm excited to share on um, the sand piles that you sweep out of your driveway and, and break off your lawn. Um, it's actually best to leave those in rows in front of your property um, rather than the little piles, the rows actually pick up a lot easier and, and more efficiently with the sweeper. The piles uh, don't do so well and leave a lot more behind. So, uh, you know, when you're doing your spring cleaning or, or whatever it may be, um, just leave that in a, in, a, in a small row across your property and, and we'll be able to clean it up a lot easier for you. Um, they've been doing a lot of... Uh, snowplow damage repair um, on tree belts and edges of people's properties. Um, that's, you know, annual normal stuff. Um, this year seemed to be a little more than usual with, you know, we had a, a few thaws and, and snowstorms and thaws and snowstorms, especially towards the end there. So, um, you know, the, our short staffed small public works crew is, is, uh, working really hard to address those things while getting ready uh, to be getting our community ready to be seen for the, um, you know, Memorial Day weekend, 4th of July weekend, um, getting everything mowed and cut up around, uh, cleaned up around town. So there's certainly a busy bunch. And, um, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd like to offer them a, a sort of apology and some celebration and acknowledgement we actually learned yesterday that not only is it ems week but it's national public works week um not one that i was familiar with uh you know last year we learned about ems week and this year we learned that they're both in the same week uh there's a lot of weeks <laughs> there's there's a lot of um various new celebratory weeks uh, being added to the calendar. So um, we'll certainly make it up to that crew very soon and, and um, try to do something nice with them like we did with uh, the fire department uh, this week as well. So uh, please, you know, I, I, I own every bit of that and uh, it's my lack of uh, keeping up with all of the new, celebrations who does oh also um uh there's a lori that just joined the zoom um our policy is that it has to be a first and last name uh, if you don't mind 
adding your last name or, or if you want to put it in the chat, if you don't know how to do it, I'm happy to do it for you. Um, I'm going to skip ahead a ways. I've been talking for a while. I'm going to go to the airport. Um, there's a lot of great things happening over there, but I think my favorite included from Jeff this week is that he's been invited to attend the National Paper Plane Day at Granite Street School on May 24th. And he is very much looking forward to presenting the award for longest paper airplane flight. So maybe I'll come join you. Oh, that's tomorrow. I can't do that. Is it tomorrow? Is it in the is it in the morning or is it in the afternoon? Ah, okay. Take a video. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, it's it's National Paper Airplane Day, right? So <laughs> they just keep popping up. Um, the number of aircraft housed at our airport has grown. We're now at um, 22 aircraft over there. Um, most, oh, I missed it. Most, um, I think, are unaware that we actually have um, a, um, an airplane builder over there, um, a business that, that actually restores and builds airplanes. Um, so they have added two to their inventory. Um, we're certainly excited for the new um, hangar lots to be available. We have interest in, in uh, leasing new acreage for um, people to erect new hangars and, and bring their aircraft over there. Um, there's, uh, there's now, uh, did you have it in here, Jeff, about how many people are taking flying lessons over there? four uh so there's a there's oh awesome thank you Lori. That, that's really helpful um there's a aviation school based over there again so um that's fairly new and they have four students um at the airport regularly learning how to uh fly planes um 109 aircraft operations this month to date. Uh, that was on the 17th, so I imagine that number's... It's rocketed to 147 in the past several days. Uh, so we can see that, that traffic continues to increase over there. Um, moving over to the work with community initiatives. Um, uh, I thought it was a nice touch, um, an idea from the community initiatives director um, to organize with the the school and the graduating class, their parents, um, to include a rotation of pictures of them and their names, um, uh, congratulations messages um, on our digital sign out front. So the entire class is out there in rotation for several seconds apiece. Um, I, I think that's been a nice touch to see as you as you drive by. Uh, you'll see quite a bit of improvement uh, to the front of our building. The work continues. Uh, we'll be putting out the bid for um, the repair of the underside of the awning here very soon. But um, you know, Diana's done a great job with the buntings and uh, the the. The awnings that are on the side, the you know the the nice blue pop now and and the sign and you know we've got a couple other things up our sleeves, but the flowers, uh, we're really starting to have a property that our community uh, can take pride in, and that's that that goes a long way. Um, so we've got a few more things planned for downtown going into the summer. A um, couple that are not mentioned on here is we're we're shopping for some uh, nice self watering. Uh, planters so we can begin to beautify the downtown again. Um, so these are larger planters that store water within them and, and they require less maintenance and then we'll be uh, looking to fill them with some beautiful colorful flowers. Um, but uh, you know on top of that we've 
you know, we, we started talking about these street pole banners a while back and when we finally made it through the process. So um, those are, those have been ordered. Uh, we're waiting for them to arrive. Um, if, if there's anyone that, that wants to see what they look like ahead of time, you know, feel free to shoot me an email or stop by. I do have some files I can uh, share, but they're, they're, they're quite a bit bigger and they're absolutely gorgeous. They depict uh, the highlights of the community and the surrounding areas um, with, you know, outdoor recreation and, and depiction of the, uh, the history with the mill and, and um, they, they really are impressive. So I'm excited to get those up. Um, she is continuing to oversee uh, the community center concept design, uh, Brownfield community wide assessment where we are um, assisting commercial property owners um, with the assessments to find out what, if any, um, toxins, brownfield related uh, uh, contamination is the word I was looking for, um, is in their property. And then um, we can then move them forward in the process and uh, help them get some money to clean that up in the future um, to, to speed up the redevelopment of some of these properties um, so that we can better and more effectively market them for economic development opportunities. Uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of getting ducks in a row uh, when strategizing for economic development um, that doesn't always look like a brand new Walmart showing up. You know, there, there's a lot of preparation that needs to be done um, in a community before that really begins to evolve. Um, you know, the awnings are up, Skeeto projects going along. She's uh, the head of that as well. Um, she also leads the events team for the town, um, who, um, give out our town of Millinocket scholarship. Uh, it's two $500 scholarships, uh, per year to graduating seniors, um, looking into, um, college degrees and also, you know, entrepreneurship. Um, you know, so it's a, it, it opens up to um, different sectors of, of the graduating class than many other scholarships. So those will be announced during senior night this year um, at the school as part of their whole celebration. And then um, at the June 13th meeting, we'll plan to have them here for their formal resolves uh, from the town council. Um, I mentioned the CDS request earlier to the USDA um, and then of course the $100,000 grant that we were just rewarded and following the final steps in to provide grants to uh, commercial property owners to improve their properties. Um, that should be going live in the near future. Um, and then we got, uh, she was able to win another $100,000 reward recently that we're um, putting the final touches on that will um, go towards re replacement of uh, older windows within our building, uh, which will continue to uh, make us more efficient and, and cut bills, um, cut, cut expenses back for the municipal building. Um, and then one more $10,000 grant recently from the uh, main community foundation that will um, go to uh, better situate the Skeeto funding. So, so some of that will go towards finishing that project. Uh, that was a, that was a real blessing The you know, certainly from the beginning of that conversation to now uh, the costs have increased as everything else has. So um we're looking forward to the end of that, having all of that money to do it. Um, tax clerk, town clerk's office, 
Um, we're actually doing pretty well by the looks of it with um, the amount outstanding from 2024 real estate. Um, we're only looking at 355 accounts totaling roughly $350,000. Um, so at this point in the year, that's not too bad. Um, and then with personal property, um, 28, 28's account, uh, 28 accounts, um, still owe a total of about $9,800. Um, so letters of reminders there have been sent out recently um, and continued communication comes from the tax collector's office, um, even phone calls and, and uh, stuff for some account holders that um, have smaller balances due, trying to make that a little more personal. Um, the upcoming primary election and school budget validation is June 11th. Um, town clerk and her team are getting very well prepared for that process. It's always an exciting workload. Um, the absentee ballots um, are the absentee ballots for the validation are available here. Yes. Both. Okay. Um, so those are available and can uh, also can be for the primary can be requested um, by the electronic ABR system, mail in, in person, or over the phone. Yes. Um, the re for boards and committees, we're actually looking pretty good right now. Um, we do have one full seat available on the Recreation Advisory Committee, um, as well as one partial term to expire in March of 2025. Um, lastly, the 2024 boat registration stickers um, are available, um, as well as ATV registrations. Please keep in mind there is now a mandatory agent fee uh, increase to $5 on those ATV and snowmobile road, uh, registrations. There's quite a bit more in here. There's a lot of great things happening at the fire station uh, and the EMS. We thank them for all their great work. I'm not going to read in detail. Um, and then I've included um, the monthly update from Ms. Furukawa at the Millinocket Memorial Library for your review. Thank you for your patience. Councilor Higgins. Yes, Mr. Manager, I want to say it's good to see that the scholarship is there again this year. I know you and I were discussing that a while ago. Yeah. Um, my only question I got on that, does that also include for vocational training centers? For yes. That scholarship? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Just... Vocational technical schools. Correct. Yep. Okay. Thank it you. It just expands to uh, entrepreneurship as well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the council on the manager's report? Councilor Danforth. Mr. Chairman, um, under the assessing um, report, will you just give a quick update on what's happening with the revaluation team? Some things, some, it's in process. Uh, oh, give yes, a quick absolutely. Update on the, uh, the, <laughs> the property inspectors, assessors have, uh, they took the winter off. It's tough to do with the winter. Uh, they've been back out, I think, three weekends in a row they they usually do friday saturday um but they've been uh making a lot of progress uh getting a lot of properties um reassessed and documented um then they'll give that information over to the assessor um and then for review and then and then the data entry comes into play um and the new valuations hopefully will be in effect for April 1st of 2025. Um, so they'll be pretty diligently working on weekends, inspecting properties, 
straight through until it gets really hot in July. And then again, once it starts to cool off in August, they'll uh, work through the fall. And um, we have hired for the data entry position to start as soon as they have enough information available. Um, is there any other pieces you'd like to discuss, Bill? Any other counselors on the manager's board? How about the public? Oh, certainly let's, yes. Um, I just wanted, oh, Clark, Diana, I just wanted to um, touch on the 30 day notice aspect from the tax collector letter, just so the community is aware. Um, those will be um, probably heading out <clears throat> as she stated here in June, our timeline. So okay. uh, till then to pay on the account. Um, that can be handled and that. Oh, I wanted to touch base on the amount of absence request. Quickly, the primary um, isn't a busy election. Um, I was hoping for more act act activities mm -hmm. um, happening with that. So, probably count on two hands to see how many absence you had taken uh, out so far. So, there is. Voting in person at the town office um, if you are requesting the absentee or you can request for mail to be sent to or Okay, thank you very much. Now, yes. Uh, Bruce Levitt, Mullock, Maine. Uh, a couple things. That public works, I, you know, we're all always talking about staff and or fire EMS and police department uh, at work for public works and realizing the, the size that it's gone down to uh, they they do a tremendous mm -hmm. work on the stressful situations a lot of people don't realize the amount of hours they put in especially in the winter and I think you really should look at uh, staffing sometimes. And also with the sweeper, I I would hope that they would look for a bigger sweeper. Uh, and you're right about uh, sweeping sand out that it should be just swept out, not, not in a windrow or a pile, uh, because the sweeper will ju just go over. I would, uh, they're looking for leasing it. They they always because of price, and I understand right. that I should get a bigger one. I would also uh, under the fire department uh, implore this council and town manager because the amount of seniors, I guess I include myself in that, that. We would find a more central location. I understand they want to build that way. As of right now, I I don't foresee it. You know, it it may happen. It will happen, but the majority of our town is senior citizens, all the way up into. I know one lady, and she's still got her mind that's going to be 103 in July. Now we, uh, if you talk about Kelly's Trail Park or across the tracks, the time, and I know this from experience, can be seconds or minutes that a life is in danger. And if it's, and I'm not sure exactly where the land is, whether on the beginning or the end of the Craig stretch, but that's a significant amount of time for a hot problem or another problem, especially seniors. And I know we want more youth in this area, and I agree with that. But I would implore this council to look at other possibilities and out of town, basically. Thank you. Thank you. Just, Bruce, so you will know, though, when the committee that looked at locations, we
no sound. And we pursued, and like I say, we had a couple of prime locations that looked really good, but the owners refused to sell. So we did our due diligence greatly. I understand where you're coming from, and I don't disagree with you, but we went with the area that gave us the best uh, visibility in that moving forward, just to let you know. Anyone else from the public? Oh, sorry, Mr. Manager. Come on speaking as a member of the public, but somebody who was involved in that process even before I was in this position. Um, and as was discussed in many, many public meetings, which, you know, if you're a fan of YouTube, you can go on, you know, watch some of those um, recorded meetings, but the location chosen for the fire station um, would not actually affect the call times that we're experiencing now um, with the position of this and the um, you know in and out of the trucks and the traffic on that street and the uh, ability to turn out of it um, and make it to central street um, you know it's a lot easier to get out in a hurry um, you know from the end of central street up there and, and get to the destination than it is to navigate this uh, congested area over here on Aroostook Avenue. Um, and we had that actually, you know, looked at and studied and, and had some experts weigh in on it. Um, I know, um, Chief Malcolm at the time was very involved with that. Um, Chief Cody weighed in on it once he, uh, became involved. Um, the call times would not get worse, but very likely could even improve, uh, given the new location. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just to clarify on one of the comments that you made, because that selection was made before I even came to the council and, and, and to the committee. Um, I think one of the strongest reasons that you guys selected that was for access for the airport, correct? That's what we were told. Get out but also, also access to the airport because there was a time of trying to get commercial flights to come in here and for the FAA, FAA to uh, be able to sanction those because we needed to have, thank you very much, um, some kind of fire response within a certain amount of, of uh, distance from the airport. We could either have an on-site or abutting the surrounding area. But we also, like I say, we went to a lot of other locations and looked at probably a half dozen other locations in town and we examined everything. And it's, it was the two that pop out most in my head and I don't want to really get into area, but the frustration of having the owner say, no, thank you. I don't want to sell. And when they would have been good locations to have, that would have been more centralized to the, to the, the living area within the downtown area and still wouldn't have been that much. We could have gone ahead and placed a, a uh, fire truck at the airport and in a building there and had a, a presence but unfortunately those those sites just didn't didn't materialize so we went with what best we had to accomplish all the proximities plus availability to the airport thank you i thought yeah because that's what it was we were told as a council that it was because of the access to the airport that was one of the facts batteries yeah um okay thank you okay i'll give you that one all right but you can't wait for those new microphones no i can't not now <laughs> not sure that when the music stops whatever microphone's in front of you that's the one you got uh seeing nothing the manager's report let's move on to uh council mcgallan will you please read order 133-2024 Certainly. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Order number 133-2024, 
providing for execution of the town warrant for May 23rd, 2024, it is ordered that the town warrant for May 23rd, 2024 in the amount of $172,415.70 is hereby approved. Do I have a second? Second. Council, uh, motion made by Council McGowan, second by Council Danforth. Any big hitters, Council McGowan? We do. We have several, so hang on. <laughs> We have uh, $11,679.34 to Green Thumb Lawn Service. That's our annual maintenance plan and then fertilization and grub prevention at the cemetery. $21,059.32 to Harris Computer Systems. That's our annual fee for our uh, the town's TRIO software program. $27,184.35 to Hoyle Tanner and Associates. That's legal fees for the airport reconstruct. $4,675 to, to Lincoln Rental Systems. That's for the porta parties um, at the bandstand in Peddler's Hill and also the extras that we ordered for the Eclipse. $4,539.81 to Maine Technology Group. That is our tech support contract. $41,128.53 to Maine Water Company. That's our hydrant rental. $12,595.28 to Stryker Flex Financial. That is the lease for the ambulance cots. $23,759.40 to Toe Pro Lifts. That was a deposit uh, for the work on the ski toe project. And $8,246.57 to Versant Power for the streetlights. Thank you very much. Any council comment on the order? Down to the public. Yes. Jeff Campbell, Airport Manager. I just wanted to clarify on the Hoyle Tanner bill. That's for engineering services, not legal services. That's for the oh, thank that, you, Jeff. That's for the design of the airport runway. The, thank you. Uh, the expansion. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Anyone else from the public? Seeing none. Back to the council. Uh, all those favor of uh, Order One Thirty Three Twenty Twenty Four, Council Pelletier. Aye. Council Mackin. Aye. Council Higgins. Aye. Council Demain. Aye. Councilor Danforth. Aye. Councilor McGlone. Aye. Chair Madour. Aye. That's unanimous. Councilor McGlone, can I please read you? Have you read Order 134 2024? Yes. Order number 134 2024, providing for execution of the wastewater warrant for May 23rd, 2024. It is ordered that the wastewater warrant for May 23rd, 2024, in the amount of $16,228.96 is hereby approved. Second. Motion made by Council McGlowan, second by Councilor Danforth. Any council discussion on the order? Down to the public. Back to the council. All those in favor, Councilor Peltier, how do you vote? Aye. Councilor Backen. Aye. Councilor Higgins. Aye. Councilor DeMay. Aye. Councilor Danforth. Aye. Councilor McGlowan. Aye. Chair Madour, aye. It's unanimous, 7-0. Councilor Higgins, can I please have you read order 135-2024? Yes, Mr. Manager. Order number 135-2024, approval of an application for a vehicular license for McDonald's. It is ordered that the attached application for a vehicular license is hereby approved for RC management. See? Ronald Liddick, address Falmouth, Maine, doing business as McDonald's, 1 Sycamore Street, Millinocket. Looking for a second. Second. Motion made by Councilor Higgins, second by Councilor McGlawlin. Any council discussion on the order? Seeing none down in the public. Back to the council. All those in favor, Council Pelletier, how do you vote? Aye. Councilor Mackin. Aye. Councilor Higgins. Aye. Councilor Dumay. Aye. Councilor Danforth. Aye. Councilor McGlowan. Aye. Chairman Doors, aye. It's unanimous. 7 0. Councilor Mackin, can I please have you read Order 136 2024? Order 137 2024. 136, I'm sorry. Um, what? 136. Sure. 
Oh, okay. Don't know where that one is. Sorry. That's all right. Order number 136, 2024, providing for approval of a application for a verticular license for Millinocket variety. It is ordered that the attached application for a verticular license is hereby approved for Daniel Nelson, business address 112 Central Street, Millinocket, doing business as Millinocket variety, 112 Central Street, Millinocket. Second. Motion made by Council Mackin, seconded by Chair Medor. Any council discussion on the hour? Down to the public. Back to the council. Council for Pelletier, how do you vote? Aye. Council Mackin. Aye. Council Higgins. Aye. Council DeMay. Aye. Council Danforth. Aye. Council McGlowan. Aye. Chair Medor is aye. It's 7 0. Councilor Danforth, can I please have you read Order 137-2024? 137-2024, providing for approval of an application for a Victrola license for Appalachian Trail Cafe. It is ordered that the attached application for a Victrola's license is hereby approved for Leah Malcolm, business address 210 Penobscot Avenue, Millinocket, doing business as Appalachian Trail Cafe, 210 Penobscot Avenue. Second. Motion made by Councilor Danforth, second very strongly by Councilor Higgins. Any council discussion on the order? Seeing none, down to the public. Back to the council. Councilor Pelletier, how do you vote? Aye. Councilor Mackin. Aye. Councilor Higgins. Aye. Councilor DeMay. Aye. Councilor Danforth. Aye. Councilor McLaughlin. Aye. Chairman Door is aye. It's 7 0. Councilor Higgins, can I please have you read Order 138 2024? Yes, Mr. Man uh, Mr. Chair. Order 138, 2024, approval of a municipal ATV grant application with Northern Timber, Cru Timber Cruisers, whereas the Northern Timber Cruisers are seeking a munis municipal T ATV grant from the Maine Department of Agriculture, Conservation, and Forestry Bureau of Parks and Lands to fund the bridge work necessary for the completion of the trail connection to East Millinocket, is ordered that the Millinocket Town Council approves the submission of the attached application and authorizes the town manager to sign any necessary documents. Second. Motion made by Councilor Higgins, second by Councilor McGowan. Any council discussion on the order? Seeing none, down to the public. Back to the council. Councilor Pelletier, how do you vote? Aye. Councilor Mackin. Aye. Councilor Higgins. Aye. Councilor DeMay. Aye. Councilor Danforth. Aye. Councilor McGowan. Aye. Chair Medor is aye. It's unanimous. Councilor Mackin, can I please have you read Order 140 2024? I can't walk the two gum at the same time. <laughs> okay. Order number 140 2024, providing for approval of Penobscot County Ambulance Protection Agreement. Whereas the most recent agreement for providing ambulance service to unorganized territories in Penobscot County has expired and it administrative teams from both the town of Millinocket and the Penobscot County unorganized territories have agreed to present the terms set forth in the attached agreement to their governing bodies. <clears throat> it is ordered that the Millinocket Town Council at the re recommendation of town manager and fire chief approve the attached Penobscot County Ambulance Protection Agreement. Second. Motion made by Councilor Mackin, second by Councilor McGowan. Any council discussion on the order? Down to the public. Back to the council. Councilor Pelletier, how do you vote? Aye. Councilor Mackin? Aye. Councilor Higgins? Aye. Councilor DeMay? Aye. Councilor Danforth? Aye. Councilor McGowan? Aye. Chair Medora is aye. It's unanimous. Thank you. Councilor McGowan, can I please have you read Order 141 2024? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. For 141-2024, providing for approval of Penobscot County Fire Protection Agreement. Whereas the most recent agreement for providing firefighting services to unorganized territories in Penobscot County has expired and administrative teams from both the Town of Millinocket and the Penobscot County unorganized territories have agreed to present the terms set forth in the attached agreement to their governing bodies. 
It is ordered that the Millinocket Town Council, at the recommendation of its town manager and fire chief, approve the attached Penobscot County Fire Protection Agreement. Second. Motion made by Council McGlawn, second by Councilor Higgins. Any council discussion on the order? Down to the public. None. Back to the council. Council Pelletier, how do you vote? Aye. Councilor Mackin? Aye. Councilor Higgins? Aye. Councilor DeMay? Aye. Councilor Danforth? Aye. <laughs> Councilor McGlawn? Aye. Chairman Dorr is aye. It's unanimous. 7-0. All righty. Reports and communications. Warrant Committee for the June 13th, 2024 Council meeting will be Chair Chair Pelletier. Yeah. Congratulations, Louie. You got a promotion. Yeah. No, thank That's you. There's a little bit of a coup here. All right. <laughs> Councillor Pelletier and Councillor Danforth. Are you both available? Aye. <laughs> yeah. <Yep>. All righty. <laughs> All right, Chair Committee reports. Uh, <laughs> yes, Mr. Chairman, I will just um, mention a couple things from the um, Age Friendly Committee. We did have a meeting on May 14th. Um, a couple of the highlights, um, uh, we're working on the, or should I say Barbara, who's chairing um, or leading the effort for the farmers and artisan market, provided an update. Um, the date we will start having the first farmers and artisans market during Independence Day celebrations, and so July 6th, and we'll go all the way till October um, 12th, except for September 14th for Trails End Festival, and if vendors want to participate in that, they can. Um, Design Lab is working on a logo for us to use for marketing, so um, we can get the word out, and there's a, a nice write-up that will be in the newsletter, and we'll get some words out. Um, get the word out for that. So that's coming along light, nicely. Last year was the first year, started a little bit slow. The weather didn't cooperate, but we're really hoping that this summer season that that can grow. Um, the other thing that I'll mention, um, our community garden spot down there at Kermit Crandall Park, um, nine out of the 10 um, beds are spoken for as far as the little plots. And so, and we have a couple of volunteers stepped forward to help weed and, and keep that um, um, looking nice as well. So um, the folks that have signed up and for that are really happy about that. And I'm happy that this is continuing and um, the community garden um, is being utilized. So, Excellent. Thank you. Uh, we will be, I, as chair of the Economic Development and Sustainability Committee, we will be meeting. I am trying to coordinate a time with the town manager to be able to have that. You will notice that in your box, I put copies of the the short-term rental agreement. So uh, for you to, to have time to go over and look over before we have the meeting. So I will get in touch with the people on that committee to uh, set up a date and time to have that meeting. Uh, anyone else with any committee or chair reports? Seeing none, uh, it's time now for the two minute public comment. Uh, again, this is a time where the the anyone from the community can ask anyone from the council any questions they may have or make a statement or whatever. Uh, please do not direct your uh, comments to any one particular council counselor, but to the council as a whole. Uh, certainly, Councilor Ra uh, former Councilor Raymond, former Councilor Raymond. You got okay. it. Uh, John Raymond, 236 Highland Avenue. Uh, I want to thank the council for supporting the Northern Timber Cruises again. Uh, over the years, uh, the club has been there approximately around 45 years. And all through that time, we've always had support from the council. All the councils that we've had, ones we've gone through. And uh, this year, in the, on the snowmobile side, we went back into third in the state for membership. So we went from sixth to third. And uh, now with this uh, new grant, um, we have got the, the bridge probably about half constructed. If you want to take a look at it, it's out on the big uh, golden road across from Pelletiers. The metal part of it's all constructed. The lumber is all there. We've expensed about $60,000 so far. We're just waiting for the permit. And once we get the permit, they're going to get that bridge in there and this trail will become a reality. I've attended five uh, sportsman shows this year in the expo last weekend, and it's been a real hot topic. A lot of people are looking for this trail to open up, so I think it's going to bring a lot of economic development to this area, bring some money in this area, and I think it's going to be a good thing for everybody. 
And uh, next week is local support year at Somerville ATV <laughs> Club. So you go right on Northern Timber Cruises and you can join up and uh, we'll, okay. <laughs> but yeah, I really want to say thank you to all, all of you and uh, over the years and, and the council that we have now. So John, hopefully we'll get that open pretty soon. So, uh, John, did you want me to share those uh, pictures that you did earlier? Ooh, visual age. Go and tell. <laughs> uh, yep. So this is the start of it, the project at Pelletier's Manufacturing. That's one side of the beam. It's an arch bridge, and the reason they built it in an arch was for the strength of it, because we're going to be putting a groom across it. It's got a multi-use bridge. Right. This is two arches on it now, and they uh, getting it all lined up. And then uh, this is getting it ready to be sandblasted. And uh, it's 78 feet long. And you can ju I can just about walk underneath the bottom of it on the arch. And then they had to, we put a lot more uh, gussing and, re and reinforcement in it. And uh, this here, uh, Jeff Pelletier had the idea of uh, putting a set of truck. They had an extra set of truck axles at the at the facility up there, and they ended up putting these tr this truck axle on it because what they're going to do instead of having to put this bridge on the trailer or something, they're going to haul it right to the site, and we're going to go right up the Golden Road, right over the Huber Road, and then right down to the site where it's going to be. They've got a fifth wheel hook up on the other end of it. And it's been all uh, primed and painted, and is uh, all the all the right there. There's a it, can't quite the see it up there, but on my show, computer it's green. <laughs> yeah, the picture doesn't quite show the size of it, but it's uh, but for a brook that's probably as wide from Mike and I, we got to go seventy eight feet because of in the the hundred year flood plan, and. Uh, the the lumber is all set up there too. So we we everything we've done, we've done it with Pelletier Manufacturing. We purchased the lumber from uh, Stearns, and uh, we're trying to keep it all in town. Mm -hmm. And Pelletier has been doing a great job on it. It's all painted, ready to go. And the biggest thing now is just waiting for the LUPC permit. So we hope to have that pretty soon. And Pete and I are going to do a little work on that. See if we can. Kind of push it along, but like I said, if you want to see it, just drive right up across from uh, Pelletier's. Okay. And they've been, you know, been great. They've done a great job on it, and you know, hopefully, we have two hundred thousand dollars for this bridge to get it done. So we'll see how it works out. Thank you very much Thank for you. all your efforts, Madam Everyone. Clerk. Uh, um, excuse me, Sandy. Just one second. I, I, Madam Clerk, we, we received a, uh, yes, a community received an email, email from uh, a citizen that I want to have her read it into this time right now. Correct. We did receive an email um, from Jessica Pelk today at 447. Yes. And um, it was her a request to have it read for a public comment. Uh, good afternoon. I'm not able to make, make it to this evening's meeting as I will be preparing for my son's spring course concert. As I am sitting here thinking about when I grew up in this town, I am reminded of all the things there were for us to do as kids. There were far less kids getting in trouble. My girls have been looking for summer jobs. They have applied all over town and got two callbacks. Why are we not begging businesses to come settle in our little town? I reiterate my precious statement my previous statement, I'm sorry. I reiterate my previous statement that there has been zero economic growth since our town manager was appointed, yet salary has still increased by $34,000 since 2022. Our roads are trash all over town. Am I the only one who sees this as a problem here? Something's got to give. Jessica Courier. Thank you. Sandy, I'll go ahead and, yep. Sandy Sullivan, 104 Sunset. 
Um, I just have a question. Uh, do we have anything from legal on charter committee? My understanding that uh, legal has contacted Council Pelletier, but I'll ask Council Pelletier to go from there. Well, <clears throat> what we know is that uh, legal is looking at it currently, so we should be hearing something, I would hope, within a month or so. Uh, Thank you, Council. Oh, go ahead. He did. He did yeah, that's plenty. Yeah. Can't go into too much. No, thank you. You're very welcome. Thanks. Thank you. Anyone else from the public? Yes. Tom Malcolm, 73 School Street. I just want to take this opportunity to make sure that everybody that's watching this and everybody that's here tonight, Saturday, the Summit Project will be coming through Millinocket. Millinocket has always been from day one, we have supported that, not only as a community, uh, not only as a town, but as a community. Uh, and I urge you all to get out and welcome the, this uh, parade. They're telling me they got about 100 motorcycles this year. Weather's supposed to be great, no rain, no hail. Uh, and they will come down Central Street, up on Hopscott Avenue to the head of the park and down Katad heading to NEOC. Uh, this is to honor our gold star families so i urge everyone to get out to that and if i could just one more uh, this year is the 50th anniversary of ems week in 1974 president ford signed making making that illegal celebration week but realize the town of millinocket when the millinocket fire department was incorporated in 1901 at a fire department and ambulance service. We have had an ambulance service in Millinocket for 123 years, way above what what the uh, average is across the country. So that's something this, this town, this fire department, and, and you as council should be very proud of. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the public? Before we break and go over for the evening, I would like to just make one quick uh statement which i think needs a little bit of clarification uh i have been around town council as a councilman for the last 15 years and that includes several town managers uh even though it is within the town manager's uh description to be an economic development director and to try to solicit businesses within the community in the 15 years that I have been on the council and the managers that I have worked with, even despite their best efforts, I cannot recall one business that was attracted or solicited by a town manager within the town of Millinocket in 15 years. Uh, so I think it's a lot harder than people think it is. And uh, I think it is one tool in the toolbox for the town manager, but certainly not the only one. Um, and I will leave it at that. Uh, anything else further from anyone, from the public or the council? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. Motion made by Councilor McGlone, second by Councilor Danforth. Any other, any council discussion on the order? All those in favor? Councilor Pelletier? Aye. Councilor Mackin? Aye. Councilor Higgins? Aye. Councilor Gilman? Aye. Councilor Danpo? Aye. Councilor McLaughlin? Chair Medor, aye. We are adjourned. Thank you and good night. Thank you. I'm turning that way. Like... <laughs> hey, uh, Rachel? I think we have a packet of information that you had requested. That, oh, you got I did. I ran down the card. I just wanted to make sure you had it. Like, yeah. Follow me down. Bobby? Yeah. Okay. All righty. I can't. I not much that uh, 
Not much. It'll vote down my own raise. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, 